Well, it's often been said war changes people often for the worst, but U.S. Airman Trey Perfurio never expected the conflict in Afghanistan would make him a veteran living with diabetes. His amazing and heroic story just ahead. Today in the D-Life kitchen, we're heading to the ranch to round up a mouth-watering salad. And Jim Turner, he's been through a great deal on this show, and today he's going to hell. Welcome to D-Life, your source for a healthy diabetes life. Kids with diabetes today have access to plenty of camps just for them. But back in 1958, Camp Nahada was one of the first diabetes camps, and it became a trailblazer for others. That story a bit later. But first, imagine serving in Afghanistan and being shot down in the heat of battle. It happened to Airman Trey Perfurio, and the dramatic transplant that helped save his life is now giving the diabetes community new hope for a potential cure. I talked to Trey and the amazing team behind this life-saving surgery. Take a look. Forget what you've heard about sacrifices in Iraq and Afghanistan and listen with fresh ears. All of a sudden I heard a pop pop. Uh, I saw one bullet or one, I didn't know what it was, hit the wall in front of me. It was a dust wall and then I fell. Had that gone through you? Yeah. All, every shot I took, all three of them went through me. Um, I only heard two rounds go off, so it was so quick. The, um, you know when you fall, you know you're falling. It wasn't like that. It was like, bam, I was on the ground. Didn't realize what happened. Were you wearing body armor? No, we were on base. We don't wear body, we don't tendency wear body armor unless we get an attack. So um, I wish I was. I would have saved a lot of things. His mission was to train Afghanis to take the fight to the enemy themselves. Instead, on a remote base near Pakistan, 21-year-old U.S. Airman Trey Perfurio was left to die. On his back, after being shot three times by an Afghani sleeper agent he'd been training, a friend and fellow soldier, Trey thought. So this was a coward. He shot you in the, in the back. He shot me in the back and just walked away. I left my arms back up. They were covered in blood. I thought I was, I thought I was done. And they called for a medevac and they said seven, ten minutes. I really thought I was done. <laughs> Rescued from the desert floor, Trey's unprecedented medical odyssey began. Patched together and treated by medics in Afghanistan, Trey was flown on to Ramstein Air Base in Germany for more surgeries. And finally, airlifted to Walter Reed in Washington, D.C. for yet more operations to rebuild his entire abdominal area. Dr. Camillo Ricordi, who perfected and invented much of the life-saving transplant procedure, assembled his team Thanksgiving night and told Army doctors to remove Trey's pancreas and fly it to Miami quick. I'm happy that we were able to uh, help someone uh, who risked his life for, uh, to, to fight in Afghanistan for, for the rest of us. I was uh, also particularly touched because it's the same uh, age of my daughters. Ricordi's team saved the insulin-producing eyelet cells from Trey's shot-up pancreas, and within six hours, those cells were on their way back to D.C. It's amazing how you can do now through Internet technology and, and telescience, telemedicine. Trey's transplant, sending the pancreas from Washington to Miami, removing the eyelet cells, sending them from Miami to Washington, and inserting them in Trey's liver had never been done before, not in two cities by two different teams. Dr. Ricordi and his team coordinated the procedure on an internet connection with the surgeons at Walter Reed. It proves that the procedure works from the start to the finish, including the way the eyelets are harvested, the, the novel shipping method that Dr. Ricordi developed, and it proves that it can be done at a distance. Trey Perfurio's results were remarkable. The purified eyelet cells inserted into his liver are producing insulin, just like someone without diabetes. It sucks that they did it, but it's amazing that they did it. That was my biggest thing, is they actually tried it. Because if he wouldn't have tried it, I would have been brutal diabetic. 
Thank you very much. The team, transplant pioneer Dr. Recorder, Army surgeon Dr. Craig Shriver, Trey, and donors gathered in Florida recently at a fundraiser toasting Trey's survival. And although he's not cured and will have to monitor his blood sugars for the rest of his life, Trey's recovery means a soldier now enjoys another role outside of his military duties. Trey's now a father. Now this is inspiring. Dr. Camillo Ricordi, chief of the University of Miami Medical School's Diabetes Research Institute, believes that within just five to seven years, islet cell transplantation could be in use for everyone in need. We'll be right back with more DLife after this.